I wanted to break down what is the difference between a standard will and a revocable living trust. Okay, let's get started. All right, so here's the thing. Everyone knows what a will is. If you've had any loved one that's passed away, odds are that they had a will. In fact, I put 100% on that they had a will, unless they didn't create any type of estate plan and they died what's called intestate. And then the government took, took over and determined how the assets were gonna be distributed. So what is it about these two estate planning tools that tends to cause so much confusion when it comes to setting up an estate? Well, I think a lot of it is with the legal profession itself, is that there's so much money wrapped up in the probate process that most individuals are convinced or told, um, or there's you know just marketing out there that the will is the way to go for most people. That unless you have a huge estate, you shouldn't consider any other options. Well, see, this is where the misconception lies and where the mistake is in most people when it comes to planning their estate is that they buy into this. Now, I know this from, of course, firsthand experience being an attorney, but my grandfather was an attorney. And in his practice, it was comprised of estate planning, which was predominantly will-based, okay? And then a few other little things as well. And how did that work out for him? Well, when it comes to wills, the things that make it so attractive for attorneys to set up a will versus a living trust, and, and I'll explain these as I go along, all right, is that in a will, you have to go through probate, all right? With a living trust, there's no probate. Now, what is probate? Well, a lot of people think that if I put everything down in, in, in a will, or, you know, when I pass away, I'm going to leave everything to my wife, and then she has a will, and she says whenever she passes away, she's going to leave it to our two kids. That if you have that set of instructions, when you pass on, then you can just move your assets to those beneficiaries. But in point of fact, you can't. Because when you pass away, any assets that are titled in your individual name, say it's a house, vehicle, bank account, stock account, in order to transfer those assets to another part person, a beneficiary, you have to open a probate. Because when you open the probate, you receive what are referred to as letters of testamentary, which means it gives the executor of your estate the power now to transfer assets to whoever the beneficiaries are under that will. And so when I open up a probate, the court will give me letters of testamentary. Maybe I get 30 of them because my client happened to have a lot of titable assets. And then when I contact the financial institution, they're gonna say, give us your letters of testamentary so we know that you have the power by the court to move this asset. Now, one of the things about the, the will that you find many times is I call them simple, right? That we set up the will so that they're gonna, all the assets will be distributed to this individual when I pass away or to these kids gonna be split evenly. And there's not a lot of thought put into how we want those assets to go to them. And the problem with the simple strategy, let's say that, you know, it goes from you down to these three kids here. Well, what happens if this child right here is in the midst of a divorce from this person right here who's none too happy about this whole proceedings and they're suing this child? Well, all of a sudden they receive $800,000. What is this person gonna do? They're gonna go from that to that. Oh, I'm much happier now. Look at all that extra money that we just found. So probate, when you use a will and you go through the probate process, if it's a simple will and you're just distributing the assets outright to your beneficiaries, the issues you could face is that, hey, maybe an ex-spouse is gonna take part of that estate, or maybe this person right here is being sued. Um, because of some of their real estate investments now. So attorneys coming after them, they're gonna be able to go after and possibly seize those assets. So the simple will is not the preferred way of handling it. With a living trust, what you'll do typically is you have more flexibility. It's automatically built into it that when you're making your distributions, you can choose to set it up that when I pass, <clears throat> my assets that come down to my kids here, they're gonna come down in their own separate trusts. I'm not gonna give it to them outright. I'm gonna move it into a trust for each of them and that's gonna determine when they receive the funds. So I can put in there things like, hey, if you're involved in a divorce, you're not getting any money. Or if you're involved in a lawsuit, you're not getting any money until that's all settled. So it protects the assets up here from whatever's happening down here. Until this area is freed up and these people are no longer in that scenario, you can keep the assets in stasis. Whereas over here, you can give the creditors access to those potential assets if you make it a simple will. 
Now, many attorneys will tell you, hey, whatever you do in a living trust, we can do in a will. And they're 100% accurate when they tell you that because you can actually set up a will that does something similar to what I just showed you here. So what you end up doing is you start with your will right here. So I've got my will. It goes through probate. So I send it through that big old grinder mix and give the attorney $75,000 and I give the executor $25,000, which is a key point here. Whenever you're putting together an estate plan, I always do it in the living trust. Make sure you say, hey, my whoever's serving as my trustee of my living trust when I'm no longer here, that's like the executor of the will, you're only entitled to so much compensation. The last thing you want to do is get somebody in there that's administering your estate and they think, heck, I'm going to drag this out for a long period of time because I'm, I'm making money off this. So the way you prevent someone from dragging it out is you limit how much money they can make. You can only collect $2,000 a year not to exceed $6,000 for handling this estate. Right then and there. Or you can put it in, you get paid nothing. You do it out of love and affection for your family. So the, the issues that come down here, uh, what I was going back to is that you can set up your will, it goes through the probate grinder, comes through here, and then when, it, when this gets all spit out, then it gets spit out into three separate trusts that looks like this right here. In fact, it operates the exact same way. These are called testamentary trusts. And so that is one of the biggest jokes that I find in the industry that people utilize against unsuspecting individuals as they tell you, oh yeah, we got your trust. It's going to come through your will. Okay, so what you're telling me is this. You're going to charge me to create my will. You're going to charge me to probate my assets. And then you're going to charge me to set up trust. This is the ultimate triple play for someone because you're going to get billed, billed, and billed all along the way here. Yeah, you can create the trust, but it has to go through the probate process first in order to get to the trust. Wouldn't it be simpler to do it this way? Start with your living trust, fund your living trust, and then you can create the sub-trust out of this one trust, and you're not going to get billed multiple times because all this is baked in to the initial structure. So when you're considering a living trust versus a will, the things you got to be looking at, when you go with a will, you're guaranteed there's going to be attorney involvement, there's going to be uh, the probate process that you have to go through, and depending on how you create your will, you may have issues with your beneficiaries receiving their assets. you got to be careful about the executor on what they're going to do. Whereas the living trust, you can nail all these things down. It's by default. You say, hey, I don't, I'm not going to go through the probate process. I'm going to keep it fully funded. My trustee is going to administer it. They're not going to receive any funds for it. And then it's going to be distributed to my kids in the following manner. And yeah, it's going to be held. So if they're getting sued or they're involved in a divorce, they're not going to get any assets. Guys, I hope this made some sense for you. If you've been having those questions about the difference between a will versus a living trust. And there are many more differences as well that I didn't have time to go into. that are more nuanced. But I can just tell you, this is the preferred method when it comes to planning for an estate. All right, guys, take care.